Today, I'm going to show you how to put together a large pontoon console from pontoonstuff.com. Stay tuned. And by the way, if you like these videos, please subscribe to our channel. Appreciate it. Yeah, I can make this from here, Josh. Just snug them up. Definitely not a bolt that you want to break. I'm going to be taking you through today working with the large console from pontoonstuff.com. Uh, this one is in the gray. It's getting some basic stuff um, going on this boat. And then the other one I have here is an ivory standard console. I'll kind of take you through my process of how I go about getting these consoles ready to go. This is a seven switch panel. So we have our horn and nav lights, but then it also has a 12 volt and a USB charger. Uh, and then a series of accessory switches, 10 amp fuses, so resettable at the dash. So this one, it comes with some instructions with a, a stencil to cut out. You're essentially just gonna cut out around the switches to fit that. But this obviously is made to go in this top corner where we have that angle down. Uh, and then we'll be putting in a stereo too in here. Go ahead and give them a glove box too. I have stencils that I've made out of cardboard because we do this a lot. I work on the top half. Usually this is just on the front of the boat, but on a table, I'm gonna start by stenciling all of my cutouts. Uh, we'll show you how that goes um, before I install anything. Get all my cuts done at once. It's gonna save me a lot of time and clean up too. Not every time, but most times. Your bracket's gonna look like this. is brass piece and then your helm comes up through, this will embed down in. But there is a center hole. I've got a little cutout that's mocked up to be the same size as this. I'm just gonna center it on that hole as square as I can, and then I'll trace it. You have a big cutout for the glove box. Uh, but what I'm gonna do before I do this is I'm gonna measure down a couple points to line this up, and that way I know I've got it right. I usually do two inches down, two inches over, and that gives me my starting point. And if you can read it on my stencil, it is 12 inches long by four and a quarter tall. This one was given to me by the customer. Um, it's a Garmin Fusion, it's a square unit. It's gonna go up on this dash or this panel up here. Never installed one of these fusions. Uh, wiring wise, almost every stereo is the same. Pretty universal. Um, performance wise, has good reviews on Amazon. Uh, usually a pretty good indicator when you have a lot of reviews and they're mostly good. Um, sharp looking unit, but I've really fallen in love with those Deckmate, the round ones. Um, they just do really well uh, and hold up really well. So what I'll do on this is I'll just measure my length here, cut out for this centerpiece to drop in, and that's how we'll do that. That's everything that's getting cut out of this one. I said it's pretty simple, so um, I'm gonna get my Dremel tool out, we'll make all these cuts, and then we'll move on to installing everything that's going on here. When working on rotor molded plastic, plastic seat bases, consoles, a good plug-in corded, the battery power just don't have the juice to keep going, uh, is your best friend. So we're gonna go ahead and make our cuts here. Got all of our holes cut. Um, what I, you'll see it normally is that I'm gonna leave some of the, uh, the marker line, so I'm gonna cut always on the inside. We'll mock everything up, make sure it fits. Um, 
and then that allows me to go back and trim away more if I have to. Haven't found a good way to add more plastic back yet, so it's always that rule of you can always cut more off, you can't add more back. You think I can make this from here, Josh? <sighs> perfect example stereo doesn't quite fit I'm gonna go back and just go on the line a little bit all the way around to get that to fit in better everything fits um, so the place to start is going to be installing in um, with stainless always stainless typically number eight uh, Screws just three quarter inch or plenty for all this stuff. Might use an inch for this because we're a little more of an offset here, but um, in general, three quarter inch will get all of these in. And then we'll we'll have to drill our five sixteenths holes for our steering, uh, and I can run those bolts through. That will actually bolt this brass fitting in. Then I can run my helm through underneath. We'll show you that in a minute. Holly's over here behind me working on a, uh, customizing a cover for a customer's boat, and my dog, River, just went and laid on the brand new cover. Just laying on the ground right now while she's working on it, but anybody else's dog do that? Just go lay on random stuff, blankets, towels, bubble wrap around here, cardboard, whatever. He has to lay on it, I don't get it. Whenever you're uh, running screws into rolled and molded plastic, uh, just be gentle. So. Give it a little bit of pressure to get it going. And then as soon as you get, whatever you're putting in there, as soon as it starts to suck down, that's enough pressure. You could use, uh, this is an impact and you can see, I'm not even running it till the actual impact kicks in. It's easy to strip them out and there's just no reason to. It's not going anywhere. So really cool, um, pontoonstuff.com, they've done a really good job. So this is deluxe switch panel installation instructions, gives you that template to cut out. Um, but then it also is gonna help walk you through what all the different colored wires do. So if you are exploring or moving switches around, I do that a lot, it's gonna tell you which colors correspond, these wires that go into the harness, which correspond to uh, which items on your boat. So if you want to switch things around, all you got to do is look up what the colors are and go from there. I like to run my nav lights and then I like to start with lights. So this boat is going to get docking lights, uh, interior LEDs and exterior LEDs. Then I'll go to the stereo and then this one um, is going to be for a live well. So I like to work lights to uh, electronics and then other accessories. So we'll use every single switch on this panel for this boat. The other reason I say don't push super hard, don't try to drive that screw in, uh, is if your drill bit comes off the screw, you're gonna leave a mark in that rotor molded plastic. If it was fiberglass, you might scuff it up. Um, and if your finger gets in the way, just ask me, uh, you'll put a hole in your finger. So I'm gonna drill a 5 16 hole, three of them, for this bracket so I can run the hardware through. So what I'm gonna do is go ahead and tighten all three of these bolts, get those nice and snug, then I can run the steering helm itself up through and that's where the steering wheel will attach to. Josh is here. He just worked out. <laughs> I've taken the console, we've got our bolts in here, um, and I just flip it upside down. So this is what's nice too about working uh, on a table or something, but if you can see in here, that's that bracket. Uh, this one, I do have to put some spacers and washers in because these bolts have a collar on them. If I had some brand new 516 stainless around, I would use them, put a nylock on it and call it good, but I don't. So we're gonna use what we have. We can flip this right on its backside and I can work on it, easy to get access to. You'll see the, uh, the standard console, a little bit smaller one, a little bit more of a challenge to work on just because uh, I'm not gonna be able to flip it necessarily like this. I haven't found any need to put a big backer or a plywood backing board uh, on this console. It's, it's pretty sturdy when you get everything together. So 
So brackets in, we're good there. Um, and then I'm gonna go ahead and run the helm through. Let's talk about this real quick. This is your helm, Teleflex, uh, quick release, rotary system, really, really common system. Your steering wheel is gonna mount on here once it goes through the dash, uh, through the console. Your cable is gonna go in this hole. There's a little um, release here. So when you're removing, uh, there's typically a pin with this and you push that and that releases. There's a little uh, locking mechanism here. Your cable will run around it. There's teeth in there that actually turn the steering cable. It comes through and this is your excess. Uh, that's why that's covered because you have this big greasy uh, coil. When we install this, my brass fitting is inset into the dash. These three holes are each gonna take a quarter inch, typically they're a brass um, bolt, but we're gonna line this up. This one's gonna orient this direction because glove box would be in the way here. Uh, uh, we're gonna have to line up with this bracket, these holes. It's not like, there's basically a couple directions it can go. You can't just keep turning it a little bit. You need to get all three in there and all three will only line up in certain positions. And now I can go around to the front side and run my bolts through. I'm just gonna get each of them started and then without tightening it all the way down, that way if I need to move it a little bit, I can, and then I'll go ahead and tighten them all the way. I'll go ahead and take my wrench and tighten them in place. Just snug them up. Definitely not a bolt that you want to break. I do recommend work with clean hands when you're working on these uh, because real greasy stuff will get, uh, will leave marks. If you do get it dirty, not the end of the world, um, some dish soap on a rag with some water will clean these up really well. Those are the three bolts that I just put in. Those are the quarter inchers, 7 16 head. These are 5 16 uh, with a half inch uh, head on them. Normally, the, the very last thing I do on a boat is actually install the steering wheel, but on this one, the console's so nice and big that putting the steering wheel on isn't gonna hurt me. So we're gonna do that. This one's getting this super awesome carbon fiber um, Schmidt steering wheel, real sharp. But what you've got, if you saved everything, you've got your bezel. So that's gonna cover up all of this steering stuff. That's gonna go on first. And if your bezel is all beat up um, or, or dirty or anything like that, they, they tend to clean up pretty easy, but you can spray paint it with a nice Krylon plastic paint. Uh, it's something that doesn't get a lot of abuse, so if you paint it, it's really gonna look good. I've done it a couple times. The next piece, uh, we've got our little locking key here, half moon key. That's gonna rest in this little hole on the top of your steering uh, helm. So that goes right in this hole. It's not uncommon uh, where I have to wire brush them uh, or sand them to get the corrosion off. It's a good idea to put a little bit of uh, lubricant, white lithium grease or other grease in there. Slide it into place. And then on my steering wheel, typically you're gonna have a groove that catches those keys. You can see that there's three in this one. Slide it over. And then you're going to have a big washer and typically a three quarter inch nylock or locking nut. Take my socket. Nice thing here is the cable's not hooked up, so I can just turn this. Put our cover back on. This console is ready to go up and join um, the top or the bottom, sorry, the base. If you like these videos, please, please, please subscribe, um, like, comment, let us know what else you want to see done, uh, something that you're working on or you plan to work on on your boat, let us know. Uh, we're happy to share our knowledge and help make your life a little bit easier when it comes to working on your boat.